the world has ever known except Jesus Christ. He was the greatest. He was a master. He wrote the first five books of the Bible. He went back into eternity. He went back to the foundation of the world. Through revelation gifts, he told us things we had never known. Because of his close fellowship with the Lord. And the Lord said, I'm calling you now, Moses, to go down to Pharaoh. Called and sent to Pharaoh, not to an uh, easy place, you know. You know, Brother Hoover used to say, I'm looking for a church. He's joking, of course, to pay a big salary. He said, I want one way back in the country where there's no old folks. Don't want no old folks in if they get sick and they have to visit them. And he said, no telephones. And he went on and on all, just a heaven on earth, the big rock candy mountain, you know, back there. And a lot of folks are actually looking for that, really. But there's no such thing as a big rock candy mountain. And, but Moses was sent right back to the man that has been wanting to kill him for 40 years. And he walked right into his presence, not with the army, but with a little stick in his hand, and threw it down, and he turned to a serpent. And from that day, signs, wonders, and miracles happened. And for the next 40 years, we see Moses leading the children of Israel into the wilderness, not one day did they go without water. Not one day did they go without food. Not one day did they go without clothes, and there was no factories out there, and there was no, uh, no big stores out there, and no clothing stores, no nothing out in, those, in the wilderness. And yet, they ate well, slept well, drank well. Everything is great because... There was a man in close fellowship with God. And all he had to do was say, Lord, they need this. And the Lord would say, go over and hit that rock. Amen. And the waters would gush out. But as to go on down to the end, Moses was not allowed to go over to Canaan land. For 40 years he taught it, preached it, prayed it. All kind of great things happened. But he made one mistake. He smote the rock when he should have spoke to it. But look, just before the crucifixion, the Lord had three disciples that were very close to him, Peter, James, and John. And he said, I want you boys to meet me. We're going out here on the Mount of Transfiguration. We're going to climb that. And on that mountain there came a mighty move, a cloud, and the glory of God and the Lord talking. And they looked and there was Moses.
talking to Jesus. Huh. He come out of that grave that God put him in. God knew where he was at. Just called him out. And there was Elijah. Here they were talking to him about the crucifixion which would be the number one greatest thing that ever happened on earth in all eternity. When the great, wonderful Son of God crawled up Golgotha's hill and let him nail him to an old rugged cross. And Moses and Elijah was there to encourage him. Angels gathered around the place. But men who were out of fellowship, their church had backslid. They had become cold and indifferent. They didn't know they crucified the Son of God. Only a few. Mary knew. All the disciples fled except four of them there. Mary, Mary Magdalene. John, they all fled as he was dying on the cross. But could the world's eyes have been opened, they'd have seen trillions of God's mighty angels. You could see Gabriel and Michael. Can you see them with the hand up towards Jesus on the cross? They just say the word, and we'll blow them off the earth. Just say the word, and the whole mess will cave in. There won't be no Israel. There won't be no Jerusalem. There won't be no Canaan land. We'll just sink it like the, if you'll just let us, we'll sink it. It'll be a salt sea. He said, no, that's what I came for. And Moses saw that, and he chose to suffer. And God loved that. Sometimes when we're in close fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ, we are required to suffer Not always do we get everything, you know. We think the closer we get to him, the less troubles we'll have. No, we may have more battles, but he's there with us to help us win them. He needs men. He needs men like Moses. He needs men like David after his own heart. David was a man after God's own heart. There's something about David. He just sang and he worshiped God all the time. Wasn't enough to do it. And he got up in the morning. He'd get up at midnight and worship the Lord. He overdid it. And God loved it. We need to overdo it. Amen. We need to overdo it. Fellowship. Lord, it's not enough. I need you more than once today. I need fellowship. I need to hear your voice. I need to feel your touch. Just touch me one more time. Amen. Touch me. You know, Moses, it's, the Lord said to Moses, I'll send my angel with you. He said, oh, if you don't go, I'm not going. I want your fellowship. And now closing, the last move here that blessed the heart of God, that thrilled him beyond measure. When he said to Moses, he got to talk to him about all the things and our closeness and our fellowship. And uh, I talk to you face to face. And I know you by name and all of that. And he got through with all that. Moses said, yes. But there's one more thing. I want to 
to see your glory. I want to see your glory. The Lord said, Moses, no one's ever looked at my face and lived. But here's a man that loved the glory and the fellowship of God. So the Lord said, I'll tell you what, I'll put you in the cliff of that rock. And I'll put my hand over your face. And I'll walk by. And as I walk by, I'll take my hand off. You can see my hinder parts. But you can't see my face. The great story of one of God's greatest leaders was fellowship close to Jesus. I don't know what you want tonight. And there's a whole lot of young preachers ask me to try to get me to tell them they're called to preach. I said, no. I said, walk with Jesus. Get out somewhere. I don't know. Paul had a great experience on the road to Damascus. Great light shining from heaven. Knocked him off the horse. He got the Holy Ghost. Ananias' house. Baptized in Jesus' name. But how oh, that wasn't enough. So he goes to the Arabian Desert for three years. In that lonely desert, he fellowshiped the Lord Jesus Christ. He never heard the apostles, all the doctrines that they taught, but he got them direct from heaven. And when he compared them, it was all exactly alike. Go a little further, Paul. You want fellowship. I want to get away from it all. I want to get out on the windswept desert. I want to hear the voice of Jesus again. I heard it on the road to Damascus. Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? He said, I want to hear it again. 